हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एक्साइटिंग लेक्चर ऑफ कैरियर वाइज सो टुडे वी आर अपलोडिंग द वीडियो बिट लेट बिकॉज वी वेर क्वाइट ऑक्यूपाइड एंड आई वॉन्ट टू शूट एट राइट टाइम एंड हाउ इज योर लर्निंग गोइंग ऑन do let me know in my comment section or do let let us know in the mails man uh, let's let's start the communication between you and us where we will also know about where you are facing any problems or or you are getting benefit out of it and do share our videos to your people to your surrounding to your friends as well okay so with that what we will do today so to we will talk about outsourcing that we left in our previous class along with that a new topic called reverse billing and how it is attached to contract accounts and the practical examples of it so do watch till the end and let's start the communication between you and me man let's start start the class thank you yeah so i'm trying to explain the invoicing outsourcing we put some condition and those condition need to be satisfied by that invoice if it's not satisfying with that invoice we need to outsource that invoice and uh, somebody from the um, company or from the business they need to check whether the amount is correct or not if not they reverse and recreate or else they will release that now till the outsourcing till the outsourcing the amounts are not posted okay uh, but once they release it release that the amount will get posted okay that means till the outsourcing the amounts get generated everything you can see but the posting is not happen because release will allow the amounts need to be written into the gl okay so that release which we do the release it link to the account determination because the release is happen at the contract account level that's how we are controlling the posting of the outsourcing into the general ledger that uh, is mentioned here once you release the outsourcing stuff it will go and do the settlement and post it into the uh, general ledgers and these things are checked automatically or manually most of the time the outsourcing is checked at uh, manually manual level okay now when you do a uh, reversal of invoicing it is again uh, reverse completely if you do complete reversal that means the the entries which are done at the gl level that need to be reversal as well but if it's not completely reversal partially reversal like the billing documents are they are still then the gl need to be cleared because we are linked to the invoicing we are not linked to the billing so the gl need to be uh, reset and the open item need to be closed when we do a reversal of the invoicing okay so you can see here uh, we have a 1000 uh, or something when you do a reversal it is minus 1000 and it will go proceed like that and if they corrected and regenerated again the posting will happen let it be 1000 was wrong we reverse fully reverse and uh, regenerate and reposting will be happen everything will happen on the same contract account but it will be resetted so when we see at the display label what is the amount so it will show something is um, 1000 something is minus 1000 if we put the display in that label but most of the time we reverse the everything will not Uh, so that at the display level display level means at fpl 9 okay so invoicing document get crossed means we reverse that and similarly there are some cases where the adjustment reversal happen in that case what about the adjustment amount that amount need to be reversed like here you can see minus 
minus 70, new document 40, 60, everything is adjusted and minus 20 need to be posted into the next cycle. What is impacting at the GL level? The GL level need to be posted whatever the uh, rest amount there. Okay. And this, this minus amount also it get posted when it will be re-invoiced in the next uh, invoicing. It will capture that minus 20 and allow you. If it will not post it into the next period, it will not allow to the invoice as well. It will show that there is the adjustment amount pending. Okay. Mm, not for metering. Okay. Then that is for the general invoicing and uh, how we do the reversal and that general invoicing the reversal is also linked to your joint invoicing and budget billing. Whereas collective bill is a bit different. Collective bill is like you can see there are three persons, Annie, uh, Henry and Maria. They all are linked to a single contract account, which is the <clears throat> mentioned collective collector uh, limited. So this person having a contract account which linked with individual contract accounts <clears throat> okay now each of these individuals okay having the same contract account uh, category of 0 01 0 02 0 02 uh, 0 01 0 01 0 01 all are same category that means they are individual customers whereas this collector contract account having a category of 0 02 0 02 defines it's a collective account so collective account these are child accounts okay but this collective account don't have any technical uh, data it have only the data of collective account and business partner so he is the business partner and the collective contract account and that collective account is linked to the individual contract accounts so when we do the invoicing, we'll generate the invoice for each of these individually. And finally, you post it under a single contract account for this business partner. Okay, clear? Okay, so what I'm trying to explain, when we are creating a contract account, let it be CAA2. CAA1. Okay, so when I'm creating the contract account here, there are two options 01 and 02. 01 is your contract account, individual contract account. 02 is your collective bill account. When you choose 02, that means this contract account is a uh, collective contract account. So we can pass any business partner and create a contract account, which would be a uh, collective contract account right now this collective contract account need to be allocated to uh, to the contract account individual contract account so at the individual contract account we have a uh, condition to applying the uh, collective contract account like in this first tab also in the below can you see the collective billing account here we need to apply the collective billing account okay and that billing account will be responsible to any of the uh, any of the posting which is happening finally for this contract account so this is the contract account 704 and this is the collective billing account okay now this collective billing account, how we know this is a collective billing account from the contract account category. So this is not a correct one. Okay. So that same thing is defined here. There are individual contract accounts. Those individual contract accounts linked to a collective contract account. How? As I show you in the system at collective contract you need to apply this contract account number and they are linked to this collective contract account okay but when we do the invoicing we do the invoicing individually for each of them right 
And once we completed the invoicing, finally we post them under this collective contract account. Okay, that means the posting is happening on the collective contract account. And once the posting happen, that is called the collective invoice. Okay, so the payment will be done collectively by this person under a single invoice. So as I gave you the example of a society where there are uh, let it be three houses are there and they decided they will pay together. Okay, so they they uh, create a collective contract account for the society and they link all of them and when whenever the in invoices are coming, they collect the amount and pay to the let it be whoever the society owner and he is paying that to the uh, utility company. Okay. So now it is saying that individual invoices are created and finally one more invoice is created. So you can see the amount initially 116 and then 232. So the amount posted under this business partner is 348. And when all they collected and posted, it will be get cleared. Okay. So three persons are there. Right now, 406 because 116, 232, and 58 are added there. All right. Now, here there is one of the major stuff, or that, that's, that is the one of the catch that everyone should have the same due date. Right. If somebody is under a separate portion, separate um payment terms or separate class contract class then it will not work okay next so if you see the whole labels of the process individual and collective contract account you can see the billings are done individually and then we uh, uh, we link them together, okay? And once we link them together, uh, the final printout generate from that final connection. So when we connect them all, we link them together and finally we generate the print document. Now, when we generate the print document there, we need to check whether it's a, it's a collective billing account, it's a uh, joint one or it's a, uh, general one because based on that we need to identify the print okay so the print from is based on these types and we allocate them so you can recollect the print from is also allocated at the contract account level okay so you can see the print form the print form now this print form is responsible for your uh, pdf printout and it will be designed based on the type of uh, invoices. Then the major stuff is coming that is clearing control. Now, all these invoices, everything is done, line items get created, now posted, and we need to clear them. Okay. So, uh, probably the next class onwards, we'll discuss about the clearing, how we clearing the documents and uh, clearing types, and we'll configure the clearing type as well.